Hey friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor and I share these what's for dinner videos every week to hopefully give you guys some new meal ideas as well as motivate you and myself to cook more for your family. We had a bunch of delicious dinners this week. All of the links that I have will be down below in the description box. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner. It is Friday night and tonight for dinner we are having pizza and it's been a while since I showed like the pizza dough recipe that I use so I thought I would share it tonight. So I'm starting off with one cup of warm water. We don't want to be too hot so I just get like tap water um, pretty warm not like burning boiling hot because we don't want to like kill our yeast. And then I'm going to add two and one quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. This is not instant yeast, it is just regular active dry yeast. Two and a quarter teaspoons is equal to like one packet if you buy it in packages, but um, I buy it in bulk. So just two and a quarter. And then we're gonna add in a tablespoon of either sugar or honey. I've done it with both and um, I prefer it with the honey. So I'm gonna add the honey in there. I'm gonna stir it around and then I'm just gonna let this sit for five to ten minutes and let our yeast develop. Okay, this has been sitting for about 10 minutes. As you can see, my yeast has bubbled up very nicely, so it is still active. Now I'm going to add in two tablespoons of oil. Um, it says olive oil. I usually use olive oil, but I have used um, vegetable oil in the past because I was out of olive oil. And then a teaspoon of salt, and I usually use kosher salt. So got that. And then we're gonna use about three cups of flour. I have to move the camera because I forgot to get a measuring cup out. Okay, three cups of flour. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add in about one cup and stir that around with my spoon. And then I'm gonna get my bread hook on here, dough hook, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and start mixing it and slowly work in the other two cups, um, give or take half a cup. Sometimes I little, need a little bit more, sometimes I need a little bit less. And I always use bread flour now when I make bread or pizza dough. It just turns out better, um, in my opinion. You can use all purpose, I just think it tastes better and it's a little bit like stretchier when I use the bread flour. The bread flour is higher in gluten, so that's why I like to use the bread flour. All right, got my dough hook on here, and I'm just gonna do this on the two setting, which is like for flour, for doughs, um, and just slowly work in that other two cups. Added in two and a half cups of flour and it's starting to pull away from the sides and it's slightly tacky uh, at this point I'm just gonna let that knead for six minutes um, that's what the original recipe says to do it says do not stop earlier than six minutes she says it seems to be like the magical number so that's what I always do and the dough will continue to like pull that stuff away from the sides and get nice and smooth Uh, 
as you can see, this came clean away from the sides of the bowl, formed a nice, slightly tacky, smooth ball of dough. So now I'm just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of this bowl, pull this dough off of this dough hook, and roll it around in that olive oil, make sure it's well coated, and then it's just gonna sit in this bowl covered with a towel for the next one to two hours, let it rise, and then we'll make our pizzas. been an hour and a half if I can pull this out oh my goodness okay it's been an hour and a half as you can see my dough has probably more than doubled in size I'm going to punch this down and then separate it into two balls of dough and I'm gonna make two pizzas with this I am preheating my oven to 425 and I'm going to par bake each pizza crust for about five minutes before adding any toppings so I'm just gonna like roll them out and work them into the shapes of circles as best as possible. One of my pans is bigger than the other. So I'm not gonna divide the dough directly in half. I'm gonna do like, you know, three quarters for one pizza and a quarter for the other pizza, something like that. So yeah, I'm gonna get this out. Um, I'm gonna flour uh, my surface. I'm gonna use a glass cutting board and just flour it and kind of knead it a couple times before rolling it out. Okay, here is this finished pizza. I already cut up the other one. After I put the toppings on, they went back in the oven on 425 for eight minutes and they turned out perfect. So that's that one, the other one that's cut up. And then that's Andy's plate. Um, it's got a salad, me and him will get some pizza when I cut that other one. There's Elijah's with some salad and some cucumbers. Lily's got cucumbers and tomatoes, and then there's mine with some salad, got tomatoes and cucumbers and ranch dressing on there. But that is going to be our dinner for Friday. Saturday night was a remake of the dinner that I was supposed to make for my sister's birthday dinner. If you remember from a couple weeks back, I had made enchiladas, we had to cancel the dinner. So I just remade all that. I will have the video linked down below where I made it previously because I just did everything the same. So we had some homemade guac, enchiladas and some refried beans and just celebrated my sister's birthday and then I of course made the strawberry tres leches cake again this time it was way better I did half a cup of sweetened condensed milk half a cup of evaporated milk and half a cup of strawberry milk and it turned out so good everybody loved the cake Sunday night was burger night. I had these pre-made burgers from Kroger that were like a mixture of sirloin and chuck and something else. And I just seasoned them up with salt and pepper. And I had already cooked some bacon in the oven and I like to cook my burgers in my cast iron pan in a little bit of bacon grease. It gives them a little bit more flavor and it's super delicious. So that is how I always cook my burgers in my cast iron pan. Even if we don't have bacon on our burgers, I always have my bacon grease jar in the fridge so I can just put a little bit of bacon grease in there to fry up the burgers. So I just fried these up and then we had them on some pretzel buns. These ones I actually picked up from Kroger on Markdown. Some cheddar cheese, bacon, and then on the side we had some sliced tomato. 
some Cheetos, the little bone ones for Halloween, and some cucumbers. And Elijah and I had pickles as well, and that was our dinner for Sunday. It is Monday night, and tonight for dinner, we are having a lemon pepper salmon. And to be honest, this was supposed to be a lemon pepper salmon and broccoli. I had some broccoli that I did not feel like cooking last week, and I planned on cooking this week, and I didn't make it. I'm not perfect. I try to use everything and not waste food, but sometimes things happen, and I just don't feel like cooking something that I bought. And then when I go to use it, it's moldy. It was a moldy head of broccoli. So, instead of broccoli, I'm just gonna cook up a can of green beans, the way I always do it, some chicken bouillon, body of complete, butter, salt, pepper, garlic, you know the drill. Um, I did share that like the other week, if you're interested, I'll link that down below. It's easy, it's just a can of green beans. And then I'm gonna make this long grain wild rice from Aldi. Um, yeah, it takes like 20 minutes on the stove. So I will make that, but for my salmon, I've got some frozen salmon that I thawed. These are from Sam's Club. They are some nice pieces of salmon. Um, they are skinless and boneless. Bought them in a big two and a half pound bag. You get six pieces in that bag um, and they are nice, thick, good sized pieces of salmon. The ones that I get at Aldi and stuff that are frozen are definitely cheaper but the fish isn't as good looking as this. This looks like some really nice salmon. So I'm going to brush it with some butter. I've melted like two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna brush it with that. And then I've got some lemon pepper seasoning from, I think this one is from Aldi. It can be kind of salty, so I'm not gonna add any salt. And obviously it's lemon pepper, so I don't need to add any pepper. So we're just doing butter lemon pepper seasoning and then I sliced up one lemon. I'm gonna lay that over the top of it and my oven is preheated to 425 and it's gonna bake for probably about 15 minutes, somewhere between 15 and 20 because these are a little bit thicker pieces of salmon. dinner we've got our salmon our green beans and our rice and I took the slices of lemon off the kids because they won't eat the slices of lemon or even like squeeze them over their salmon me and Andy will definitely squeeze like the lemon probably over everything to give it a little bit of lemon flavor but that is going to be dinner for Monday Tuesday night I made a pesto chicken pasta. So I started off by boiling some salted water for one pound of pasta. And I also heated my cast iron pan with a tablespoon of olive oil. For my chicken, I took two chicken breasts and cut them into bite-sized pieces. And then I seasoned them all over with some garlic powder and this Cavender seasoning. This is the first time really using the Cavender seasoning and we really liked it. Like I tasted it a little bit beforehand and it's really like an all purpose seasoning. I think you could really use it on anything. It does say Greek seasoning, but it's really all purpose. And I just seasoned the chicken all over with that. And then I added it to that hot cast iron pan and just cooked it until it was done. When my chicken was cooked through, I added in some Italian seasoning and some minced garlic and let that cook for about 30 seconds. Then I added in about one cup of halved grape tomatoes and just let that cook for about three minutes or until my pasta was done.
When my pasta was done, I reserved about a cup of the pasta water before draining it. And then I added my drained pasta to my chicken and tomatoes along with about a cup of pesto. And then I also added in some Parmesan cheese and just mixed everything around, let it get hot to let that Parmesan cheese melt. And then this was ready to serve. It was super quick and easy. This pesto that I used, this is the first time I used it. It was from Sam's Club and it was so good. Um, I will definitely be buying that again in the future. It comes in a big jar, so I will have to use more of it in another recipe. I also heard that you can freeze pesto. Um, I've seen a bunch of people do that on Instagram. So I might do that. But this was it for dinner this night. We just had this. A salad would be good with it. Um, but it was super filling. You know, it's pasta. It's got chicken in it. Um, so we just had this to make it super quick and simple. On Wednesday night, we had red beans and rice with andouille sausage. So I started off by just browning up a one pound package of andouille sausage. I buy this at Sam's Club. Comes on a two pack. So I just used half the pack. And I just fried that up till it got like nice and crispy. Once my sausage was cooked how I wanted it to be, I added in my box of red beans and rice. I am using the Aldi one and you just cook it according to the package directions. So for this one, you add three cups of water, your rice, your beans, your seasoning mix, and one tablespoon of butter. Give that a good stir and bring it to a boil. And then once it came to a boil, I reduced the heat, covered it, and simmered it for about 25 minutes until all that liquid was absorbed. This makes for a super easy dinner and it's really delicious. And you can use like any boxed red beans and rice um, that you want, even like the dirty rice. Really, you can add sausage or meat to any of those boxed rice mixes. After the 25 minutes, my rice was done. So I just removed the lid, give it a stir, and then I let it sit over that low heat for three to five minutes just for it to like thicken up a little bit. And I just like to serve this with some canned corn on the side. This was delicious and super easy to put together. It is Thursday night and tonight for dinner, we are doing chicken and gravy in the Instant Pot. I had planned to do this in the crock pot, but I didn't thaw out my meat last night. So I thought it out earlier today. I'm gonna throw it in the Instant Pot tonight and it'll be super simple and easy. Basically the same as doing it in the crock pot, just I didn't have to start it this morning. That is why I love having an Instant Pot because when I don't plan ahead, I can still make pretty much the same thing that I was gonna make in my crock pot, just in my Instant Pot. So in here I have some chicken thighs. I've gone and like removed most of the fat off of them, not all of it, cause it's nearly impossible to remove all of it, but I did cut off most of it. As you can hear, my Instant Pot is done making mashed potatoes. So as soon as I get those out, I'm gonna add these into the Instant Pot. Thankfully I have two inner pots for Instant Pot. I used my stainless steel one that the Instant Pot came with for the potatoes. And I'm using my non-stick one for my chicken. So this is about probably a pound and a half. It's six chicken thighs. To that I'm gonna add some garlic powder. I do have a recipe that I'm loosely basing this off of, but um, I'm not following it exactly. But I will leave it linked down below. It's the crock pot recipe. Um, some parsley. I'm gonna do a little bit of ground sage. And then we've got some pepper, some black pepper. I'm 
I've got one can of cream of chicken soup, and then I'm gonna fill this can about halfway with some water. Okay, now I've got some diced up onion. This was one like small onion. I just diced it up. And then finally, I've got two packs of chicken gravy. I'm just using this one from Aldi. I'm gonna get that in there and stir this around. Okay, I've got my chicken in my Instant Pot now, and I'm gonna cook this on manual high pressure for 30 minutes, and then let it do a natural release for 10 minutes. Um, it should only take between like 10 and 15 minutes to release all the pressure naturally. This is done. I'm just gonna like use some forks and shred up this chicken and stir it all up. And we're gonna serve this over some mashed potatoes and have some green beans with it. And here that is all plated up. We've got our chicken and gravy over top of our mashed potatoes. This would really be good with rice as well, but I prefer mashed potatoes. My family wanted rice, but you know, I won this time. And then we had some green beans and this was very good. As I said, I will have the recipe for this in the crock pot link down below. And I did adjust it a little and do it in the instant pot, but it was delicious. And I will definitely be making this again, especially when it like actually cools off. It's still like really warm here in Georgia. I need some fall weather so I can eat more like comfort foods and soups and things like this with gravies and stuff. I'm so looking forward to that. But that is going to do it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave me a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already and you do like these kinds of videos. Let me know in the comments if you plan on trying any of these recipes. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!